Good morning lovely friends, this is Nikki and you are here in the sewing room with Nick. Today we are doing a project from the Tilda Hot Chocolate Sewing Book. So this is the bowl that I'm going to be making today and I'm going to be making it in the small size. So things that I will need to make that, I'm going to need to choose my fabrics which I've got here. I have got six beautiful green Tilda prints here and they will be the fabrics that I use. And the other thing that we need to use is a fusible interfacing. So I have got this one here. This is just a light interfacing. So when I'm putting my bowl together, rather than just do interfacing on half, I'm actually going to do interfacing on all of the shape because it is quite a lightweight interfacing and I don't want to go to the shops to buy more. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's find the pattern pieces. So we are going to need to either photocopy or trace our pattern pieces out. So the interfacing you would normally just do the half size, but I am actually going to do both my fabric piece and my interfacing both this size because I am using just a light weight. So I have already traced around this and cut it out. You could photocopy or trace, I've just traced it this time. And I am going to get my fabric pieces ready. So for each piece we want to trace around our pattern ready to cut out. So I'm just using a um, water soluble marker. It won't matter what marker you use um, because these seams will be on the inside. But we're just going to trace around the edge. Okay, so I've cut out um, six of my petals using my paper pattern that I've just traced around and cut them out with scissors. And I've also cut out six of the light interfacing. Now, if you're following the pattern, you would use a heavier weight interfacing and just use the half piece. So it would only be uh, fused to half of the petal. But because I have a light interfacing, I'm going to use the whole length pattern. And I am going to fuse those to the back of my pattern pieces. And when you're fusing fusible interfacing, to have a quick look, it looks the same on both sides. But actually, one side has actually got, I wonder if you can see, one side has actually got uh, like sticky spots. So it's actually better to see it in the sunshine. But this side here, it has got my tacky side. It has the little sparkly dots on it. And that's the side that I'm going to iron to my fabric. So I'll line it up and iron it on. And it's a good idea when you're doing interfacing that you actually use a pressing cloth on your ironing board just to protect your ironing board a little bit because otherwise you can end up with some tacky sticky spots on your beautiful ironing board. So it's a good idea to have a bit of a pressing mat as well. So I'll take these over to the iron and fuse them all on. So I'm just using my little girl today. My big girl is put aside for another time. I'm going to lay across my wool mat just a pressing cloth 
and then for each piece I'm going to lay the interfacing on top and I'm just going to press. I'm not actually going to iron. So to me, ironing is gliding the ironing, the iron from side to side, whereas pressing is just lifting and pressing. So I'm just going to press it on and then I will flip it over. And on this side, I will give it another pair of press as well, just to make sure that all the glue is melted and it's all fused, fused to my fabric. And to check that, you can just try lifting it up. And if it doesn't lift up, then it's fused nicely. So we'll put that one aside and move on to the next one. Okay, so all of my paddles are now interfaced. I've interfaced them the whole way across. I'm actually going to press each piece in half, just a finger press in half, so I know where the fold is going to end up. And then I'm going to stitch each petal going from the center line that I've just folded. So matching up my folds. I'm gonna stitch from here all the way down until a quarter inch away from the base. Now, if you want to, you can actually get something to mark each quarter inch. So if I take one of these and I just do a bit of a across to where the quarter inch is going to be and I can do that to each one and know that I'm going to stitch to that corner so I'm going to eyeball it but that is a handy way if you're not sure where to stop that gives you a bit of an idea so we're going to be stitching from the center point down to that line and then from the center point to a quarter inch away from here as well. And we're going to do that with all of the petals, but on the last petal, we're going to leave a turning gap. So let's take these over to the machine and we will get stitching. So I'm lining up my pieces so that they're sitting nice and in line. I've got my quarter inch foot on. I'm gonna start at the center. until I reach that point I'm going to do a little back stitch and then I'm going to flip it over and sew down the other side exactly the same way so I'll line it up onto those previous stitches I'm going to stitch all the way down to very carefully line it up so our points at the top are all aligned line it along the sides find the center and that's where we're going to start stitching and we will stitch that all the way down the bottom 
making sure that at the bottom our edges are lined up as well. when you're doing it that you'll actually be able to feel where the quarter inch is that you're going to be stopping at. So you'll actually feel where this starts and you'll be able to stop that just in time. And we're going to go from our stitching here all the way up to the top again. I have got all of the pieces joined together and just my last closure to stitch up. So I'm going to stitch the top bit up like normal. So I'm going to join these together and stitch all the way to the bottom. And then for this side, I'm just going to start stitching it about two inches away from the base and down. And that's going to give me a turning gap here that I can turn through my work. So once you've turned it all through the right way, you're going to just have a bit of a fiddle with it. So there's my opening on the inside. We're going to tuck one side down onto the other and just have it so that our center pieces are joining up. And then we can kind of pull and mold our bowls along each seam, like so. Make sure that Got our turning gap pulled through too. There we go. All right, so once that's done, 
we can go to the iron and just press each seam and the outside fold so that they're sitting nicely. Okay, so now that we have pressed the top seam, I'm just going to hand stitch this opening closed on the inside here, and then we can top stitch around the outside edge. Okay, so I've hand stitched my opening closed just here. It's all been hand stitched closed. And now I'm going to just top stitch around the top edge. I'm going to do that using a quarter of an inch, uh, a slightly longer stitch. When you're top stitching, it's a good idea to do a stitch length of about a three because it just gives it a, a nicer look. It looks straighter and just neater. So we're going to do a top edge stitch of a quarter of an inch around the top, and then we can look at ironing the base. Okay, so I've top stitched around the top of the bowl. Now what I want to be able to do is just give the base a bit of a press. Now because it is a bowl shape, it's quite tricky to do. So my solution is to actually fill the bowl with something that you can iron with. So you could do this with a, I've got a ball of yarn, but you could also use some rolled up socks and just put it upside down on the table and we're just gonna give the bottom a bit of a press as well. There we go. Now we've got our nice little bowl shape. So I'm glad I used the fusible interfacing the whole way through because I think it would have been too flimsy otherwise. But that lightweight interfacing going the whole way through seems to be working beautifully. And you've just got this cute little fabric bowl that we can put some things in. Isn't that sweet? What a great scrap bowl. Or how would that look in Christmas fabrics? And you could put some little hot chocolates and some candies and things like that all in there. Ready to gift at Christmas. That would just be the sweetest. So nice. So there you have it, a sweet little fabric bowl, just like we had in the Tilda Hot Chocolate Sewing Book. And I just really love it, it was such a quick, easy make. Um, I think I would again, just use the lightweight fusible interfacing and do it the whole way through. I really like, it's, it's not too rigid, but I don't think it needs to be in a small bowl. If you did want it to be a little bit stiffer, you would just go to a medium weight, I think you wouldn't use a a, a very ultra stiff one, I don't think, for this because I would worry about the bottom sitting right if it was too thick. Um, you would have to do a little bit of trimming on those bottom seams to have it sit nicely. But I'm really happy with how that one turned out and I can't wait to make some more projects out of this gorgeous book.